The Markala Center for Applied Ethics and the Silicon Valley National Association of Corporate Directors presents Good morning again. My name is Jim Ballasone. Welcome to the final segment of our interview with Dick Levy on the role of boards of directors in good, effective corporate governance. We know that trust and transparency are important characteristics of good corporate governance. But isn't there always tension between the two? I wouldn't say there's always tension, but in a lot of boards there is tension. And my view of what causes that tension is here's management trying to run a business, and here's 10 or 12 board members, each of those board members, trying to tell the managers what to do. The manager, the CEO, now has 10 or 12 bosses. And that's a very uncomfortable situation. I mean, I've been on both sides of that. And I found that I started to resent the board when I had 10 or 12 bosses. Uh, and ultimately, that led to me being less transparent. And I think that's a natural inclination of managers who are, trying to, who are being micromanaged. The solution to that is a very simple one. Number one, it's that the board should decide who is going to give the instructions to the CEO, not 10 or 12 people. Maybe the lead director, maybe the chairman. But it has to be focused through one person. Second, the way board questions are phrased in meetings is very, very important. It is, not, it is not the right approach to say to a manager, I want you to do it this way. It is the right approach to say, have you thought of other ways of doing this? The first example is micromanagement. The second is leading the, the manager to think differently and to possibly look at different ways of doing things. In the work that I've done in business ethics, Dick, there seems to be a view that there is a basic conflict between achieving results for the bottom line and good ethical behavior. Could you dispel that false choice? Occasionally, companies have to do things that are not what they would like to do just to survive. Uh, if a company gets in terrible trouble, they may have to lay off loyal employees. They may have to discontinue a product that the customers like. They may have to discontinue some R&D on an important product that would help humanity. In the short term, survival is very important. In the long term, the more of those types of actions that a company does, the less likely they will be to, see, to be successful in the long term. Because companies get reputations, boards get reputations, and being unethical for short term reasons will end up biting you in the long term. Describe the elements, if you would, of an effective relationship between a CEO and his or her board. Once the management team does not look upon the board as their adversary, all kinds of good things can happen. The management team can present problems that they have openly to the board. The board can react to management uh, and evaluate how they're doing on a timely basis and say we don't agree that this is being done right, etc. There can be an open give and take if the adversarial relationship has been done away with. And that's a healthy relationship. Uh, another healthy relationship is management has clear objectives given by the board, agreed to by management, and at every meeting those objectives are reviewed Management says, we've succeeded on this, we've not succeeded yet on this, we have problems, and here's what we're doing about it, or here's where we'd like advice from the board. It's a very open-ended, transparent relationship. And really, it's a beautiful relationship once you get past the fact that management looks at the board as trying to micromanage them. Dick, what does it take to be an effective independent director of a public board? Well, now we're talking about individual people. And first of all, individual board members can't be divisive. One board member can ruin a meeting for 10 people. And that has to be managed. And that's the job of the chairman, I believe, uh, to make sure that the chemistry of the board is good. 
And usually it is. These are smart people. Usually the chemistry is good. But I've been in situations where it's not. And that, that has to be rectified. So that's a very, very important point. Second, I think good board members have to be good listeners. And by good listeners, I don't mean just hearing the words. I mean hearing the body language, the intonation. I was once on an investor call. Uh, it was a telephone call where we were talking to our, our analysts in New York. And one of the analysts called back later and said, your body language wasn't right in that call. I'm worried about you. This was a telephone call. And he was making a judgment on body language. And that's what analysts are good at. They hear more than the words. They can look you in the eye and tell what you're thinking beyond what you're saying. And I think board, mem board members have to have that kind of intuition about what management is thinking and doing. So aside from doing the traditional compliance requirements of a board, the governance requirements of a board, they have to add value by really having the right chemistry and by having the right relationship with management. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yes, there is. Uh, I don't think there's a formula or a recipe for a good board. Every company is different. Every board is different. People are different. The market changes. The times change. There's no real recipe. Uh, for example, some companies are in deep trouble. They're about to fail. In those companies, the board has to micromanage. They have to be prescriptive. They have to be directive. Some companies are well managed. In those companies, the board has to be supportive, ask good questions, get into the ethical dilemmas that the company might face in the future. Some companies, and we've seen examples of this recently, are having performances that are too good to be true. Stock is going through the roof. Managers are walking away with 20, 30, 50 billion do million dollar uh, uh, compensation. Boards in those companies have to be a little bit skeptical, have to ask deeper questions. Maybe the stock is great, but what are we doing to make it to be too good to be true? Those kinds of boards have to be a little bit cynical about what the company's doing. So I think the board has to constantly be adjusting to the situation in the company, the people in the company, the market they're in, et cetera. On behalf of both the Ethics Center and the Silicon Valley chapter of NACD, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you very much, Dick, for your time and your effort. It's been a real pleasure for me. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.